the problem early on. Sixty-year-old Frederick Lyons of Washington, D.C. knows he should eat right, but has little appetite or money for food these days. Lyons lives alone and takes nearly a dozen medications for diabetes, high blood pressure, and clots in his legs. You got all those kind of things. You, it's, it's, it's kind of bad, and you, you don't have the, the, the thoughts of eating like you should. Uh, of course, if you had a companion, you probably would eat right. Health experts say while Lyons may appear well-fed, he and one out of five older Americans are at risk of malnutrition. How can you tell if you or someone you know is at risk? The National Council on Aging and other health groups have developed a list of warning signs. You're asked to check off, for example, whether you have an illness that made you change the way you eat, whether you eat fewer than two meals a day, eat few fruits or vegetables or milk products, don't always have enough money to buy food, eat alone most of the time, or take three or more different medications a day. If your score indicates you are at nutritional risk, then talk with a doctor, dietitian, or social service worker for advice on how to improve your eating habits. The fact is that nutritional status is a vital sign of health, just as one's blood pressure or just as one's pulse. Millions of copies of the checklist will be passed out at senior citizen centers, doctor's offices, hospitals, nursing homes, and other public places. It's part of a five-year project called the Nutrition Screening Initiative. Well-nourished older people, whether institutionalized or free living, enjoy speedier recoveries and overall better quality of life. But until now, medical facilities have done little, if any, routine nutrition screening on the elderly. The chairman of a congressional subcommittee on aging hopes this guide becomes an institutional standard. It is an ideal preventive health measure. You might call it a low-tech solution to a major health problem. Studies have shown that in hospitals and nursing homes alone, 30 to 40 percent of the older people suffer from malnutrition. It's believed better nutrition screening could save billions of dollars in health care costs and perhaps the lives of people like Frederick Lyons. Eugenia Halsey for CNN, Washington. Coming up later on the menu, sweet potatoes spice up a simple chicken dish. Also next, whether you're old or young, if the latest news on diet and health has you confused, we've got a book that takes the guesswork out of eating. Vacation. Come to a place with rugged terrain like you'd find in the Australian outback. A place where visitors bask on warm, sunny beaches like the French Riviera. And where you'll find historical buildings like those you'd see in Italy. Come to Texas. It's like a whole other country. When you call 1-800-8888-TEX, you'll get this free 264-page Texas travel book. Come on. You can walk in the footsteps of Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie at the album. Hi. Voting, no problem, because Texas has over 5,000 square miles of water. And even out here, you'll still find the friendliest people. Thanks. Texas, it's like a whole other country. Introducing Maxwell House Light. It tastes as rich as Maxwell House coffee, but only has half the caffeine. So rich, you'll just think of it as Maxwell House. New Maxwell House Light, all the rich taste, half the caffeine. Everyone has a dream. I don't always get an investing idea between 9 and 5. So when it clicks, I do my homework. And I call Charles Schwab. I can call Schwab at any hour for quotes, news, earnings. And when I buy or sell, I get commission savings too. For free information about Schwab services, call toll-free 800-257-1257. Can we save the rich biodiversity of our cultures? How long before we tap our natural resources dry? Call 1-800-285-9408 and order Save the Earth from Turner Publishing. Adding sweet and savory flavors to baked chicken is something Burt Wolf mastered on a recent trip to Washington, D.C. Here's a recipe for chicken in sweet potato sauce. 
1789 restaurant in Washington, D.C. is named after a good year. In 1789, the U.S. Constitution was adopted, George Washington became the first president, and the phrase sweet potato celebrated 50 years as part of American cookery. The sweet potato is still a basic ingredient in American cooking, and it's used in 1789 to make a sauce for chicken. A little oil goes into a large pan, a cup or so of chopped celery, and the same amount of chopped onion, a little cinnamon, a little mace, a quarter cup of honey, four cups of peeled and chopped sweet potato, a pint of apple cider, and two quarts of chicken stock. That simmers for 30 minutes and then gets pureed into a sauce. Meanwhile, chicken breasts go onto the grill for three minutes on each side, then onto a pan and into a 375 degree oven for 10 minutes to cook through. The sweet potato sauce goes onto a serving dish, chopped nuts, parsley, and red pepper add a garnish. A slice of cornmeal polenta and the chicken. If you'd like a copy of that recipe, just send me a stamp self addressed envelope marked Chicken, 1789. Send it to me at Box 2000 and Sonia Station, New York City. The zip is 10023. Do the latest reports on diet and health have you confused? Do some foods help fight cancer, and will others lower your cholesterol? As Virginia Halsey reports, a new government guide is cutting through all the conflicting reports and taking the guesswork out of mealtime. Miracle food. One week it's oat bran. The next week it's red wine. I don't really know what to think. The conflicting headlines are enough to make some people go back to burgers and fries. But six out of ten leading national killers are diet-related, so it's important to sort it out. That should be easier to do next month. That's when the National Academy of Sciences comes out with a new book, Eat for Life. Co-editor Catherine Wotecki says top scientists combed through thousands of studies and came up with a few simple guidelines for reducing your risk of many serious diseases. It is a very flexible eating pattern. It's not a tight diet prescription. You're not going to be severely restricting the foods that you really like to eat. For example, the book recommends eating less fat something you can do by limiting serving sizes of meat to three ounces. Three ounces is about the size of a deck of cards, and each of these chops, when they're cooked, would shrink to about three ounces. You can also cut down on fat by filling up on fruits and vegetables. Eat for Life recommends five or more servings a day. Well, Techy says that may sound like a lot, but... Our serving size is a half a cup. And if you think of that as, you know, kind of a mound that's of this size, it's not much at all when you think of that much broccoli. What if you're going to a ball game and dinner means high-fat hot dogs and french fries? The day doesn't have to be a total loss. That day and perhaps the following day, you'd want to choose your breakfast and lunch, low-fat items, make sure that you're including five servings of fruits and vegetables in, into your meals, before and after that game. Otecki says Eat for Life's guidelines are so sensible, she's confident the book and many of its readers will long outlive the next food fad. Eugenia Halsey for CNN, Washington. I'm Liz Weiss, sitting in for Carolyn O'Neill. That's all we have on the menu today. Next week. Yes, you can eat dessert. We'll splurge on a light and luscious key lime cake. And lessons on nutrition take center stage. Got the girl, she's the apple of my eye. And together we make a nice pair. That's next week on the menu. At Newsmaker Sunday.